Have you ever struggled with your weight? Or is your fitness not quite where you want it to be? My guest today was in that position too. Until he found a home workout routine and a nutrition plan which has allowed him to be in the best shape of his life as he enters his 50s. Hello and welcome to another episode of Engage. My guest today is Ted Crowshaw. He's an online fitness coach based in Washington, D.C. And he took up fitness in his mid-30s after his children had grown up and he wanted to lose weight and improve his own fitness. Things went well for a little while until he hurt himself in the gym And he began to look for some online alternatives. He started doing resistance training without any weights. And in January 2021, he started taking things really seriously. He really dialed up his nutrition and he ended up losing 13 pounds of fat in just three months. He's not done there though. He also wants to get down to about 15% in body fat and then help other people reach their own fitness goals. So if this is something that you're struggling with yourself, then I'm sure you're going to get a lot of value out of today's episode. And I'm really looking forward to chatting with Ted here just to find out exactly what he's doing to keep that weight off and to keep himself in the best possible physical condition that he can do. So first of all, welcome to the show, Ted. Thanks, David. Glad to be here. Before we we get into all of this this fitness stuff, because I can see you're looking pretty pretty buff there already, or is that just just some good lighting? That's good lighting and a small Captain America on it. So. <laughs> Tricks of the trade being revealed. Okay, so before we get into the whole fitness thing, then um, I'd I'd like to find out a, a little bit more uh, about you because I know we haven't really been connected for for that long, really. So I'm I'm interested to find out um, a bit more about. Um, where you grew up and, and all that kind of thing. So if you could start at the beginning and just give us a, a few details of of where it all began for you. Sure. So I, uh, I was born and raised on the East Coast, and I currently live probably about 10 miles from where I was born, uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. And I uh, went, to, went to college locally here, met my wife at that college, and we decided that we were going to settle down, buy a home, and raise a family here. So um, you know, this is a, it's a great place to live, uh, a lot of interesting things going on, a lot of interesting people to see and places to go and, and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what, what, what my history is um, here. And, um, yeah, was there anything else that you wanted me to kind of go into? Tell us a little bit about what um, your childhood was like. What, what were the sort of things that you used to get up to when you were young? So, yeah, well, you know, I, I grew up in the, uh, I'll date myself, I grew up in the, in the 70s and 80s and, uh, you know, went to uh, public schools and played sports. Uh, one of the sports that I probably enjoyed most of all was youth basketball. And I played uh, a number of years. My dad coached. I, I really enjoyed that as a team sport. Uh, it also had some, you know, in, in, individual uh, talent issues, you know, but you did play as a team. You played as a team of five. And, um, I really did enjoy that. It taught me a lot of life lessons about uh, tenacity, learning the basics and the fundamentals. I think, uh, you know, you don't have to be a superstar in basketball. Uh, if you could just follow certain fundamental principles of rebounds and boxing out and, and learning how to shoot and that type of thing. So I, I think that's, uh, that levers itself into kind of what, what I'm doing now. Just, there are fundamentals, there are issues, there's, there's discipline and tenacity that comes into play. You enjoyed basketball as a team sport, although the whole fitness kind of thing, it, it's more of a, a, a lone journey. But you, you said there that you found things that you could take from your, your basketball journey, um, which you can apply there to, to the fitness side of things as well. So that, that's quite interesting. So, I mean, how far did you, you take things with basketball? Was that just something that you, you did locally or did you get to any, any finals and that sort of thing? Or how, how did you get on with that? Uh, here, here in the United States, we have youth leagues, and you probably had the same thing over there. Um, and, and it goes to probably about the time you're a freshman in high school, and then you would would then play in uh, in the high school on the high school team. You know, I, I think part of wisdom is understanding your limitations. And I, I knew I wasn't good enough uh, to play in a high school team. I didn't have the height. I didn't have the skill. Uh, and I, that's okay with me. Um, you know, that's so that was a, there was a limit there, and that's why I love youth basketball so much. And I've coached it a couple of years as well. 
um, is is that uh, you know you're on a team. It's not it's not a it's not a selection. You know where you where you don't make the team. Everybody pays their fee and gets some play time. And uh, that was the limit for me. You know, it, right to got to high school, I, I I begged off because that's the time everybody starts to really grow uh, and get taller. And you know, I'm pretty much stuck right under six feet, and that really wasn't going to go very far. So. Okay, so yes, yeah, so it sounded like you you enjoyed your your time as a as a basketball player anyway, even if you you didn't get uh, as as far as uh, ma- making the high school team and and that kind of thing. We we don't really do much in the way of basketball uh, here in the UK. We've got a basketball league, and and even the the village that that I live in here has has actually got a basketball team, which is which is quite unusual. But it's not really a sport that we we play that much, if if that makes sense. But but every time we watch. Uh, a movie on, uh, you know, set in the USA, it's either football or basketball is the, you know, the the big thing. You know, it's like a huge glamour sport. You know, <laughs> is is that true to life? Would you think? Is it one of these things where like that the whole like town comes to what converge on a, on a high school gymnasium and and watches the game, or is that just just creative license from Hollywood? And, you know, I think that's regional. I think there's places that you would go in like in small towns, uh, particularly like in Texas, in the South, not just in Texas, but in the South, football is big. People, I mean, those high school stadiums can, can see thousands of people um, in probably the same way with in, in the Midwest with basketball. Uh, generally in the, on the, on the East Coast, you know, they're, they're particularly in the D.C. area, there tends to be a lot of transients, uh, you know, people coming in, and come, you know, for government or military there doesn't seem to be that level of interest uh, and at least in basketball. I know what, since, since I grew up, one of the things that really became popular around here is lacrosse. And my, my uh, one daughter, I had three children. uh, My middle daughter, she played lacrosse in high school. I never played lacrosse. It's very, very popular around here. Um, But I would say that, um, you know, you, you do have a lot of interest in, in swim teams here in the summer as well, particularly Northern Virginia has one of the biggest swim, swim leagues in the country. And that's very, you know, it's very competitive that too, you know, it's very individualistic. You're, you're the only one in the lane, but you're part of a team and, and you're, you know, your scoring goes into the team score. So th- there is a lot of interest, but it's, it's segmented depending on the lacrosse. There is soccer, soccer, you know, that's what we call football here. Soccer is very popular here. Uh, lacrosse. Um, it just has its, it has its niches. Of people that are interested in that, so I would say that it used to be here in D.C. that the National Football League team used to be the Redskins. Now is the Commanders. That used to be highly popular. I mean, literally, you would in the '80s, '70s, and '80s. If you went to the grocery store on a Sunday afternoon, it would be dead because everybody's home watching the Redskins game. Uh, that's not so much anymore. Uh, I think there's been a huge cultural shift, just in the NFL in general, professional football. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, it's it's much more segmented. It's great to hear as well that uh, swimming is quite popular as well. I, I used to swim competitively when I was in my, my teens. And it's now something that my son has recently taken up um, over the past couple of years. So he's uh, get been experienced in that, entering a few competitions and that kind of thing. So that that's really cool. I, I really I really enjoy watching him do that as well. It's 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 really good. Um, I mean, with regards to, to your own uh, fitness as well. Did you did you ever struggle with your weight or or anything like that when you were a a kid while while you were trying to play these sports as well? Yeah, I was I was probably one of the, the thicker kids, uh, you know, in my in my younger years of up until high school anyway. Um, I uh, so I was kind of the the, the heavier rebounder underneath the boards uh, in basketball, um, but I, I think at a certain certain point um, I realized that even then in my youth. Uh, there, if I was going to make changes, I had to do them. You know, I, it was, uh, you know, if I wanted, if I was tired of the way my body looked or I felt I needed to make a change. And when I, so when I was in high school, I just started running a lot, just running and running and running. Uh, and, and I think I, I didn't quite understand the dynamics of the different elements of physical fitness that you need to do. You need to have resistance training, not just cardio. I was just running. So I lost weight, but I lost, probably lost some muscle mass too. I lost some lean mass and it was in my teen years. So it probably wasn't all that great for me to be running as much as I did, but I dropped a lot of weight and I, you know, I probably dropped like 30 pounds over a summer just running every day. Um, but again, I think I did that a little bit different. And I, that's kind of one of the, the stories the my storyline is that I've done different things. I've, I've, I've failed at different things. I've taken different pieces and I kind of put them all together now, realizing that 
it's a composite whole of different things that I've done over time. And that's what I'm excited about. Okay. So by the time you got to college, then you, you had some kind of handle on, on your own weight, even if you weren't losing it, perhaps in the best way that you could, if you were just, just running miles and miles uh, every week uh, just to try to keep the weight off. So what happened then after you, you left, you left college then did what, what, um, what job did you go into after that? So uh, my wife and I got married before we got out of college. And um, so I actually was looking for opportunities when I was still in college to do a, like an internship with the federal government. Um, and I, uh, so when I graduated, the idea was that I would go to work uh, for the government or business that does business with the government. And that's what happened. Um, so we were married early twenties and, you know, went right to work right after college. And I've been working in, in different ways around the, 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 the U.S. federal government since then. And that's been since the early 90s. So, you know, I'm coming up on 30 years in the career field right now. But um, and then so that's, you know, what, what I do is, 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 is called acquisition and procurement, which is negotiating contracts uh, with vendors uh, for the for the purposes of the government and the government needs and that type of thing. Whether uh, the government's buying aircraft or pencils and pens, it's people like me that do that work. Uh, and I've been doing that. It's and I and, I, and it's rewarding uh, to a certain extent. But I'm you know pivoting towards thinking about retirement in the next ten years or so. So there's always the next chapter. You know, there's always things to be thinking about next time. Yeah. So you left college where you you were pretty active, and then you moved into the job that you're you're still doing now. Um, it it doesn't sound like a particularly active job. No, it's. It's doing what I'm doing right now, sitting, sitting down. Um, and, you know, when you're in your early 20s or even into your 30s, you know, you, you can kind of afford that, you know. And, and, and I, I didn't keep up with any really any kind of consistent physical fitness or exercise over that time. Yeah, I had I had spurts where I was like, I really needed to start doing something and I would do it and then I'd quit. Uh, it wasn't until I think, you know, I, certain things started to solidify for me. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's an office job. I'm not outside, not moving around too much. You know, it's it's maybe a, a walk to the subway and a walk to the office and back again. And particularly with COVID, the changes from COVID and bringing everybody home, there's not even that anymore. So, you know, that was kind of a challenging time, like everybody else had. So while you were you were doing the, the job then, even in the, the earlier years where you say they were you in your, your early to mid-20s then, had you left all like the, the running and, and everything like that behind then? Or were you keeping up with, with any of that to uh, any, any sort of degree? No, I, I, I wasn't keeping up with any of that. It was just kind of relying on youth to, uh, to keep the pounds off. Or if I did gain some weight, you know, after indulging over the holidays, and I just not, didn't eat that like that, you know, when the, when the year turned and then everything came off again. So, but at, at some point that cycle stops. So, yeah, I just relied on, on youth. Uh, as opposed to any any kind of commitment to to physical fitness. Uh, how old are you then when the the kids came along? Because it sounds like you, you got married pretty young as well. Did did the kids follow on quite early on too? Uh, uh, let's see. We were made. I'd say uh, we our, our eldest daughter was born uh, uh, when we were twenty seven. So that was five years. Our, she was born in nineteen ninety six as our eldest daughter, and then. Our middle daughter uh, came three years later, and then our son came um, uh, three years after that. So, um, you know, by by 2002, uh, we had three kids. Uh, what what's that? Uh, six and under. <laughs> so, uh, you know that that that's a whole new chapter. You would think that with three kids under the age of six, that that would keep you quite active and quite fit running around them all the time or is that a bit of a myth would would you say my feeling is it's a for me it was a bit of a myth one of the th one of the things that i think was really difficult in those early years and i think anybody who's got children under, understands it you know is the lack of sleep you know it's, it's a lack of really solid rest and that's critically important to health um you know and i think to me that's why i think having children is a young person's game personally, you know, I wouldn't want to be too, too old on that. Um, and that's not to say that's just for me, um, because of the, the energy requirements and that type of thing. But it did, it, that alone was not sufficient to outweigh, um, kind of the undisciplined, uh, dietary, uh, habits that I'd gotten myself into. 
Um, and then it just, of course, over time, it just accumulates. It's not that you necessarily gain 20 pounds in a year, although that's possible. It's, it's more the three pounds, two pounds, five pounds, you know, one pound, one pound as, as it adds up. And then, you know, when you get in the early fifties, like I am now, all of a sudden you're like, wow, this really accumulated slowly over time and I need to do something about it. Yeah, that's really interesting what, what you say there because uh, it does creep up on you. E- even though you think that, yeah, you got young kids, you're always going to be out and about with them, but then you're you're just, you know, grabbing food where you can or, or you're eating the things that they like because they're fussy and they don't like healthy stuff and you start eating a lot more junk food. And, and yeah, I, I can totally uh, appreciate that 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 just really creeps up on you. I mean, what sort of weight would you say you were when or, or before you you had the kids and then to, at, the, at the point where you decided you, you needed to do something about it then where you mentioned you're in your mid-30s? What, what sort of weight gain do you think you were accumulated overall? So when I when I first years ago and when I was in my 30s, which is which, which I can consider to be kind of my phase one of my re-entry into physical fitness, I, I would say um, my my standard, my, my, you know, uh, just kind of that, uh, homeostasis weight has pretty much always been around 160. And I found myself in no time when the kids, you know, and it, when the kids came on, I, I put on weight and I think I probably got close to 180. And I, that was just too big for me. That's just, I don't have the lean mass to support 180. Um, when most of that was, was fat or a lot of that was fat. So, um, when they were still little, that's when I really decided to, you know, I was like, well, I remember running as a teenager and it took, I took it all off. I'm, I'm going to start running again. And that's what I did when I was in my thirties. I just started running and I ultimately got up to six miles a day. Um, and, um, but that has its own drawbacks, you know, some, I had some physical issues come up. I was just running too much. I, I'd become actually kind of, I, I tend to be kind of an obsessive personality with it, with some things. And, um, I think I probably took things too far because my knees started aching badly. I started getting, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, plantar fasciitis in my, my heels. It was like ice picks in my heels. And, um, I just realized I was way overdoing it. Uh, but I had, I had lost weight. I had brought that back down probably, you know, a good uh, 10 or 15 pounds, just, just doing that running every day. But again, I didn't put the pieces together about resistance training, which is critical. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you, you were starting to realize that you were getting old when you <laughs> started to run, starting to run in your thirties, thinking this doesn't feel the same like it was when I was in in my twenties and and in high school. And it did, <laughs> but it, it sounds like you you gave it a good go though. If you were up to six miles a day, that you know that takes some doing as well, and and to have the 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 discipline to to keep to keep doing that. I mean, that would be quite difficult, I think, to do that here in, in Wales where I live because of the, the sheer amount of rain that, that we have here. I, I don't think going out running six miles every day would be would be that pleasant. I mean, do you have the, those same kind of challenges where you are in, in D.C. as well? Yeah, we're here in the mid-Atlantic. We get some pretty cold winters um, sometimes. I mean, not in like, today. It's beautiful. It's it's 65 degrees and sunny. Um, sometimes in February you might get that. But um, you know, I would say we get probably get some average rainfall, but I did find that, uh, you know, relying upon, uh, running on the, uh, running outside, you really have to be disciplined to say, no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to run either outside or on a treadmill. And it's a different experience, uh, running on a treadmill than it is running on the street. I, I think it's more, it takes more endurance when you're self propelling yourself outside as opposed to a treadmill, although I love treadmills. Um, but I, I did I did find that it was I had to engage my mind to say there's no excuses about what I'm going to do today. It's just how I'm going to do it. So was it just the running that you were doing at this stage or were you also venturing into the into the gym as well at, at, at this point? Yeah, I, I was we had a gym at the office I worked at, um, but it was uh, mainly just uh, dumbbells. And so, you know, I thought, well, you know. Let me let me try some dumbbells, and I didn't have any kind of program or any kind of understanding what I was doing. I, I uh, you know, you, and, and that's that's a kind of a good segue into you know how important it is to get good instruction. I, I just kind of went in there, I was like, well, you know, I, I'm sure I can just figure it out, get in here and, and push some dumbbells around for a while, and, and you know, when I didn't see any results, when I didn't see anything that I thought in terms of my expectations happen, 
I just dropped that. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, and, and I, and I think it's important to, to understand what, what we need to keep us going. Um, and so for me, I tried that a little bit. I also kind of dabbled in some body weight stuff a little bit later. I'm like, well, of course, you know, you have your body with you all the time. It's your gym. You can do, you know, push-ups and all these kinds of progressions. And, and that's a real thing. And there's some people who get crazy strong doing uh, calisthenics and it's old school. Um, and I, and I tried that too, but again, it was something I felt like I, I didn't have the methodology that I, that I stuck to that kept me engaged in it. You're absolutely right there about uh, what you say about the, the calisthenics and, and things like that. Um, you, you never see a, a gymnast who's scrawny, right? They're all huge. <laughs> absolutely huge. And they, and from what I understand, they don't do weight training per se. It's all body weight. And the control is amazing. When you were in the gym, um, then you said that you'd you'd hurt yourself when, when we were chatting about this previously, that this was one of the, one of the, the, the turning points for you. So what was the, the story behind that? I, I don't want to be elderly and frail. Um, and you know, there are no guarantees and get hit by a bus tomorrow. You can get ill and that type of thing. But I started to, I started to understand that resistance training, muscle building was, is like an insurance plan. You know, you're insuring in the future a certain level of physical strength if you start if if you start building soon enough and there's lots of people who are who've been physically fed and muscular you know from their teen years on i'm not like that um i i, I realized that i needed to three to and really have the maximum benefit of enjoying my later years i needed to do something now you know one of the things about resistance training is what's, what's called progressive overload and effectively you know you're lifting more weight over time and you're stressing your body more over time. It's just that's that's the way your body works. But I think what I was probably doing was I was I was trying to go too fast and and progress too fast without being strong enough and having proper form. Because if you don't have proper form, or if you don't have proper strength, you can't have proper form. If you don't have proper form, you're going to get injured. So what happened in my case was I was doing deadlifts too heavy. And I felt a tweak in my back, but I ignored it. I kept going on with that workout. And I went to um, an inclined press with dumbbells. And you're, you know, you're at an angle and you're, and you're lifting straight up. I was lifting too heavy of, of weights there too, pro uh, trying to progress too fast. And I felt like I needed to kind of give the one arm a little bit of a, a, um, a boost. But in so doing, I really hurt my back because I... I wasn't proper form. So I, I did something stupid and I felt it pull and I knew I had to go home. <laughs> so I, I knew my, my back was, was not, was not doing so well. So I, I tried to, uh, uh, ice it. I tried to get rest, but then two days after that incident, I had to drive my daughter 800 miles to Iowa. And, um, that was excruciating. I mean, I could sit still, but once I had, once I, once I moved, it was like, it was horrible. And, um, it, it took me several days to recover from that. And I realized, okay, I'm done. I'm done with that because I knew my limitations on free weights was I, you know, it didn't have proper form uh, and I was going to get hurt. So I looked at, I, again, went online to look for alternatives to, um, to, to going into the gym and lifting heavy weights. And I, and I found a few. And, um, I, I tried to do, um, I, I got some resistance bands. So I started doing resistance bands, which was still resistance. Uh, it just wasn't heavy weight. So there, so I, and I could do it from home. So, and then that, been this was pre COVID. So, um, and once kind of the COVID issues hit, it, it, it seemed in all the gyms closed, it was, a, it was a really good thing. It was a really good fit to have things that you could do at home. And uh, that, that would, uh, would challenge your body and, and challenge your uh, challenge your muscles and give you resistance strength. Yeah. So after you would hurt yourself in the gym then and you'd, you'd felt your back go and you know things are bad when when you're trying to drive, because I've I've had things where I've hurt my back and you can't drive with a with a with a bad back, let alone do 800 miles uh, across country. That That's absolutely insane. It was, it was hard. <laughs> uh, but uh, how, how long did it take you to to recover from that then? I would say it probably took me at least, uh, before I felt like I wanted to try doing something again, resistance, uh, wise, it was probably, I was, I was, I was sore. 
uh, in, in my back was, I, you know, kind of weak, probably, probably for a, a good four weeks. Uh, I, I mean, I could still live my life, but I did not have the flexibility. I didn't have the confidence. Uh, you know, we, once you injure something, uh, like I've injured both ankles playing basketball, it takes a long time to feel like you can trust it again. And it took weeks before I felt like I could trust my back again. So you mentioned there that uh, you started looking into alternatives and um, you got yourself some resistance bands. And I mean, if if anybody listening to this is unfamiliar with, with what resistance training is, could you give us a, a brief explanation of that? Sure. And there's different types. So resistance training is just simply uh, providing a resistance uh, on your body, whether if you're doing push-ups or you're doing planks, or you know, those are calisthenics, they're resistance training. You're, you're, you're coming up against resistance to build uh, either, either uh, muscular strength or endurance, depending. And there, so there's, there's different ways to go about your resistance training. You know, are you training for resistance? I mean, I'm sorry, training for strength? Or are you training for endurance? Any of those uh, would be considered resistance trainings. And, 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 and there's different ways to do it. There's, um, like I said, there's, there's dynamic exercises there's what you would normally consider eccentric and concentric movements which is your standard uh, uh resistance training in the gym uh and also with resistance bands and then there's uh, uh what's called isometrics which is what i've been doing uh m for exclusively for the past 14 months uh which is isometric is, is a different type of resistance training uh that is um there's two types um there is what's called uh, overcoming isometrics and that would be when you're pressing or lifting or pulling something that is virtually immovable and that is that that creates a tremendous and there's studies that show that that causes a, um, a tremendous amount of strength gain um and there's also what's called yielding isometrics which would be your standard um you know, like if you're if you're holding a plank or you're holding some weights you know against yourself uh, so it's a different type of uh, resistance training. So there's 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 a variety of resistance uh, training that people could choose from, depending on what their what their interests are. Um, I, I I think that resistance bands are great. I think uh, weight training is great with with free weights. Uh, you know I've tried them. Um, you know and I but I think for me, I believe from from me and my goals, isometric training is 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 preferred. Okay, could you tell us a, a bit more about the isomet isometric training then? What what um, what what's different about that compared to other types of training? What's interesting is um, there was this uh, years ago. Actually, um, isometrics is not nothing new, and, and it's been around for a long time. And I and I believe where where the studies began was uh, back in uh, World War One. Uh, there were uh, German uh, doctors who were trying to figure out how to how to keep um, wounded soldiers from, from um, atrophying in bed. Basically, if they're trying to recover, um, they, they saw that they're, you know, they were wasting away physically. Um, and they were thinking about ways to try to challenge them to, to get stronger. Of course, but their limitations were they were in bed. So they, they, they I'm not exactly sure how it came about, but they, they started to challenge these soldiers with simple resistance training, whether they were pressing against something or lifting against something. I mean, this is a type of isometric training, like when you're, when you're pushing against, um, like I said, uh, a, a, re a resisting object. And um, so that's kind of the genesis of, of isometrics in general, is that you can physically challenge yourself um, just by, you know, um, by, by, by having things statically against you. And they have also done studies with Believe it or not, um, frogs. They 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 did. I think it's called the Philadelphia Frog Experiment, where they tied a frog's leg um, static and um, to to a, a splint. And they were surprised to learn that once they released the, the 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 binding on that frog's leg, that they started kind of hopping in circles because their one leg had gotten so strong because it was continually pressing against the splint. And that has applications for, for humans as well, um, that type of, and that's kind of what got me thinking to, it's like, wow, I can, I don't get the, I won't get the, uh, the wear on my joints when I'm, 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 I'm statically holding something. So that's what I use is I use a static type of tool um, that is specifically designed for isometric training. So I can do all kinds of exercises that you would do in the gym, but it, they're, they're static exercises. So they're not they don't injure, you know, there's no, there's no uh, danger of dropping weights on my feet because 
it, it's 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 um, it's spring loaded. Uh, there's a chain attached to a thousand pound resistance spring, and I try to move it. So I'm I'm, I'm up against this this resistance that is virtually immovable for me. So um, anyway, you know, and I and I think that it's uh, to to me. I feel like I'm I'm stronger, more fit, uh, more lean than I have, and I have you know isometrics to thank for a lot of that. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, what what you're doing now is is a much more effective and efficient way of improving your own fitness, keeping the weight off, and you're not in danger of injuring yourself horribly like <laughs> like you were when you were in the gym. Right. That's exactly what was appealing to me was that you know the. I get the benefit of, of, of getting stronger by having a progressive resistance that I can measure without the risk of injury. And so I can honestly say over the last 14 months, I have no injuries. I have no soreness. I have no joint problems. I have, um, you know, and that's exactly the type of thing I was looking for. Do you do um, other things as well? Do you do things like yoga? And because and you mentioned your, your joints, so you don't have joint pain and, uh, and things like that. Do you, do you do other exercises as well? I, I do. I, I really do like calisthenics. Um, what I'm doing now is, and I think it's 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 a, it dovetails nicely with with uh, uh, isometric. Is I do slow push-ups. So uh, I'll do um, you know I'll continually challenge myself to say, okay, I'm going to try to do a 10 second rep push-up, just five seconds down, five seconds back up. Work that way up to 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Um, so I'm working. Up, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm working on that now. Um, trying to get to a point where I can do a ladder, you know, of, of a 10 second, 20 second, 30 second, 40 second, and then back down. So I'm only doing about seven reps, but I've, I'm, I'm under, I'm under tension, time under tension for, you know, over two minutes. So that way I'm, I'm getting the full benefit of the constant tension of, of resistance and the slower I go, I mean, it's very difficult to do a slow push up. And so I can, um, so that's why I've, I've, I've reintroduced certain elements of calisthenics back into an isometric umbrella, if that makes sense. I have to say that 20 second press up sounds horrible. <laughs> I thought so too. Um, but I'm, I'm, I've only been doing it kind of consistently, uh, over the past couple of weeks and I'm already up to a 40 second push up, and I can't do many of them. But I can do one or two, um, and I was starting out struggling to do a ten second or a five, or five. You know, it struggles sometimes just to do a regular one. So, uh, but you know, that kind of goes into the same thing: is the, the the body, no matter what age you are, is an amazing machine to adapt to the challenges that you give it. Okay, so let's go back then to January of twenty twenty one. What was your, your fitness like at, at that point? Because th this is before you got into the whole nutrition side of things. So so where were you at in January 2021? So I would say, so remember I said I got I got into, got into resistance bands. So I was in resistance bands probably for almost a year. And then um, I got lazy and I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and so what I did was during that time I did nothing probably for about five months other than gain weight. So I put the bands aside. I didn't want to do them anymore. And I just started eating more peanut butter and about, you know, other types of things. And, uh, I put a lot of weight on, I, I probably, well, I put, I would say over those five months, I probably put 10 to 15 pounds on just fat. I mean, I, I was just eating, I had poor eating habits. I was not exercising at all. So by the time January, the January comes around, I was probably a you know, up a good 15 pounds or set, almost 20 pounds. So I think I was probably up about 167 or, or no. Yeah, I was close to 170. And I had been in the mid 150s at my, my leanest, you know, when I was doing the bands. So I got up, uh, you know, almost 15 pounds and I could feel it. You know, I could feel it. I felt, I felt pudgy. I felt, I felt soft. I felt lazy. And of course I was guilty in my mind because I, I, I knew why. You know, I'd lost, I'd, I'd lacked discipline and I had started eating poorly. And so that by, by that January was at the point where I felt like, you know, um, I, I need to, I need, really need to make a change. And I felt like I was, 
I was moving towards getting myself kind of refocused and I actually came across a, an online fitness competition and I signed up for it and it started in January of, of 20, what was that 20, 2021? Yeah. This time last or you know, about this time last year, I was like, okay, this is, this is the motivation I need. Um, you know, you, you take up the four picture and you send it in and, and then you go, you know, 13, 12 or 13 weeks. And then you, you know, you, I might win $15,000. This is great. So I felt like that was a great motivation for me to stay focused at least for 12 weeks or so. And I felt like I was also had learned enough from doing different things over the past. I was like, okay, I, I think I understand the resistance side. I think I understand the nutrition side. Let's put this together. And that, that was really what, what happened was I saw this competition. Um, I felt like I was going to, it would mo motivate me to, to possibly do my very best. I'm like, I'm just going to give it everything I have for 12 or 13 weeks and let's see what happens. So I took a, um, what's called a DEXA scan, which is a, uh, um, a, a kind of a weak x-ray that you go, you know, you, you sit on a table and they, they take your scan and, and they're able to determine very accurately what your uh, comp body composition is, what your, what your lean mass bones and what your body fat are. And it gives you your, gives you your baseline. So I had a baseline. Uh, I knew that I was at 28% body fat and I wanted to get down from that. I mean, I wanted to go as far as I could, you know, I wanted to cut that in half if I could. Um, and so I, I had a, at least I, I knew what my metric was. You know, always know your metrics. So I knew what my metric was and I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And so I, I put the, I put the plan together and I executed that. Okay. So it was at this point then that you perhaps realized then that exercise alone wasn't going to be enough and you took the nutrition side of things more seriously as well. Can you tell us a, a little bit about some of the, the, the changes that you made to your diet then and would you say that it's something that, that anybody could do or, or anybody could stick to, or, or did you find it a, a struggle? Absolutely. So when I went, you know, when I said, uh, you need to know your metrics, it, it, it really is the same with your, with your nutrition. And I know a lot of people don't like to calorie count, but the truth of the matter is you need to be in a, ca a caloric deficit to lose body fat. You need to be either doing more than you're doing right now or eating less or, preferred to do more to, I mean to to do both to to eat less and do more so that's what I did I, I I had to I started off with I looked up online a calculator that would give me an estimate of what my caloric needs were and then I started looking at labels and I developed a spreadsheet and I was like okay if I want oatmeal I can have this much oatmeal I can have this much milk I can have this much protein powder I can have this much you know, whatever, you know, and I put it in the spreadsheet and I still have that spreadsheet to this day. I still look at it every day. I, you know, I, I can intuitively know what I can and can't eat or what I want to eat and not. But I think it's critically important to know where you are right now so that you know how to get to where you want to go. So that was for me eye opening when I realized how much actually I was taking in and then how much I needed to decrement. And, and of course, everything's an estimate. I mean, the the, the, the labels that you read, that's understand that's all going to be an estimate, uh, but it's a place to start. So that's what I did. I put everything on a spreadsheet. I said, OK, if I if I um, need twenty five hundred calories to maintain my weight, if I'm going to lose weight and I want to lose a pound a week of body fat, that's approximately thirty five hundred calories. I need to be down every day. Five hundred calories. So I need to take five hundred calories out of my diet doing the same things I'm doing right now to get to a pound down a week. So that's what I did. So I just, I, I fixed that plan. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to be religious on this plan, 500 calories a day. And I, I did that day after day, week after week for, you know, it, and it included resistance training every day or, every, or maybe three or four times a week and walking um, most days a week too, to, to get to what, you know, what, what the result was uh, 12 weeks later. When you put things into that context where you say, right, well, I, I need to lose 500 calories a day from, from my diet because that's going to give me 3,500 a week, which is then going to lead to a one pound fat loss. It all sounds very simple when you put it that way and you think, yeah, I can I could probably do that. But where do you think then that people go wrong with, with this kind of diet? Because people know that they need to eat less and move more if they're going to consistently 
lose weight, but where do you think people go wrong when it comes to perhaps tracking their diets? I, I think probably is it's it's tedious at first to look at everything that you put in your mouth. And 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 you ask and you go on any um reputable uh, physical fitness trainer or, or advice giver or influencer online, they're going to tell you the same thing. You need to know what's going inside. You need to understand where you are right now. You need to understand all, you know, how much you're eating. You need to, yes, you need to weigh things. You, yes, you need to measure things. Yes, you need to control yourself. And that can be very um, overwhelming. A lot of people ask, well, how do I, how do I get motivated to do this? My experience is it's not about motivation. It's about discipline. And discipline is about a process. And you've got to follow the process. If you follow the process and execute the plan, you're going to get where you want to go. So it's not about, do I feel like working out today? Or do I feel like uh, being in a caloric deficit today? Guess what? No, I don't. <laughs> but when you, when you have a plan and you follow the plan, that roadmap you look at that roadmap and you say, I'm going to follow this roadmap. And, and I, so I think it's, it's twofold. It's having the right information, having the right tools at your disposal, and having uh, the, the right mindset to say, I'm not, I'm not going to feel like doing this tomorrow. Um, you know, how am I going to adjust to not having motivation? I'm going to rely on discipline. And I think for me, it was, that was the same way. My big time challenges came when I felt hungry and I wanted to eat. I wanted to eat what I wanted to eat when I wanted to eat it. And um, putting it all together, I think, does take a little bit of planning, which I think a lot of people have, have challenged. I know I did have, have challenges to, to do that. Did you ever fall off the wagon, so to speak? Uh, and if you did, or, or even if you didn't, what tips could you give for somebody to, to like put it behind them and just get back on track? And I, th that's, that's, you know what, that's key is get rid of the guilt. What you ate yesterday, you ate yesterday or what you ate today, you ate today. Tomorrow's another day. Uh, it's never too late to say, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot towards discipline again. And, um, I think what happens, and I know this has happened with me is if you fall off the, you know, if you fall off the wagon, um, is to let that cycle to, well, I'm just going to give up and you've got to stop that. You have to say, well, I, I ate too much yesterday, but I'm not going to let that be an excuse to eat too much today or tomorrow. I'm going to let yesterday be. It's done. I got to move forward. And again, I think it's, I think it's, a, it's a mental discipline too. Um, no matter what you do in your life is that you have to have the proper mindset to, to let that go and be focused on this and be disciplined and getting back on track. Some really good advice there. And it sounds like you had that discipline overall, even if there were a few wobbles along the way, because at the end of a three month period of, of following this new routine, you dropped 13 pounds of fat. Was, was that something that you, you were noticing along the way or were you shocked at the end when you, you weighed yourself out after three months or. I, I could, yeah, I could definitely uh, so I went back to a, a to another DEXA scan. So I, I had my baseline, and I knew how I felt. I knew my clothes were, were getting looser. Um, I know my my waist measurement was going down, but I really didn't know what those numbers were going to be. I was hoping for um, more uh, lean mass gain, um, and I was hoping for more fat loss. Uh, you know, I, I had I have high goals, so I, I set high goals for myself. Um, I would say, but when I went in and took the scan and then, um, the scan indicated that I had lo had lost no lean mass. And sometimes when you're in a severe cal well, a significant calorie deficit, you're going to lose some muscle mass, but I didn't. And that was exciting for me because I, my lean mass stayed consistent. So all I lost was pure body fat. So once that kind of sunk in, I was pretty excited about that. You know, I was pretty excited that, okay, now I've broken the code for myself on how to lose body fat. And that was, that was a big deal for me. I thought, Oh, okay. I, I tried some things. Yeah. I've, I've, I failed on, uh, on some things, but I felt like putting the plan together and following that plan got me exactly what I wanted to do is lose body fat. I didn't get everything. I, you know, I, I didn't get everything. I wanted to lose, you know, closer to 20 or more, but that's okay. So I, I took a break after, you know, in, in April 
and decided, okay, I'm going to bring my calories back up. I'm just going to do resistance training. I'm not going to overeat. And I'm going to lose that other 13 pounds at some other time. Well, that's why I am not right now, right? So at the beginning of this year, I'm like, I'm going to knock out those other 13 pounds or more um, to get to 15% body fat. So I know the formula. I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I've tweaked it a little bit. I'm not doing a daily calorie deficit. I'm doing it what's called intermittent fasting. So I'm you know two two days a week. I'm going 24 hours without food. The other days are my normal calorie level, um, and so that way you're I'm always getting the same amount of calorie deficit every week, but I'm only doing it over two days as opposed to seven days. So that was something I felt like I wanted to try and test this year. So I'm several weeks into that. I'm not you know I'm I'm on my cycle towards getting you know getting to 15 percent, but I'm not there. But I'm I'm moving through it. How do you find that? that works then in comparison to what you did the the previous year then do, do you find it easier to just do the, the fasting over two days as opposed to trying to, to be disciplined every single day of the week yeah I, I'm, I'm finding intermittent fasting for me um, is is I'm, I'm actually fasting today uh, and I kind of forgot that um, I, I'm finding it doing two two days a week is easier I, I can I can focus on I can kind of put food out of my mind I can I can um, and and I, but I know tomorrow actually t- uh, I'll, I'll be having dinner um, so you actually don't go a full day without eating the, the cycle I'm on so I went from dinner last night to dinner tonight so a 24 hour period but I I I, I don't go one day without eating if that makes sense so I know I'm going to have dinner tonight and I know I'm going to have my full calories tomorrow so I'm like oh I'm okay I, I can deal with this. Um, when it's every day, it's like, oh, 500 calories down tomorrow too. And the day after the day after that, that kind of grinds on you over time. Uh, so I'm finding it easier. Yeah. And, and I also get the diet break by eating my normal level of calories. So I, I don't feel like I'm messing with my metabolism because I'm getting five days a week. I'm getting my normal calories two days a week. I'm on a deficit. Just to go back to your first 13 pound loss in that three month period that didn't go unnoticed now you were also featured by a a company on their website can you tell us a a bit about that sure yeah so um i I mentioned that um you know i started doing uh, isometrics and i uh i bought a uh what's called an iso chain um and so i just started this i I said okay i'm gonna i'm just going to um exclusively use isometrics in this 13 week period 12 week period and uh, see what it does. So I did that. So I, I, I use that and I, there's a, there's a Facebook page for IsoChain users um, and the company that makes it is on there too. So I posted some pictures. I said, well, this is, this is me in January and this is, and this is me, um, you know, uh, 13 weeks later. And this is what I, this is, this is the results. And they were like, Hey, we, you know, this is great. This is a new product. We'd like to profile you. Do, we, do you mind putting that we, if we put this on our website? I'm like, yeah, great, go ahead. So, you know, they they put it up there. You know, it was a little sheepish because, of course, my before picture I was Senior Pudge. You know, I was like, man, that's I don't know if I want to see that. Um, but it, uh, you know, I was pretty excited about that. You know, it showed some that that people are encouraged me to to that that um, you know that, that I made some significant changes. It wasn't just me imagining it. You know, I, I saw it and uh, they they saw it too. And that wasn't the only place that you were featured either. Uh, tell us about uh, the YouTube channel that you got involved with as well. Yeah, so one of the uh, one of the guys um, um, on the Facebook page I mentioned, uh, and actually an early proponent of the ISO chain, uh, was um, a guy named Chris Johnson, and he has a YouTube channel. He's a per- he's a personal fitness trainer in uh, in Pennsylvania, and um, so we you know we were chatting on that Facebook page, and and uh, you know he reached out. Uh, to say, hey, you know, would you be interested in talking about, you know, me doing an interview with you about the uh, about your results and about the, you know, what you did? And I said, yeah, sure, great. And this is about the same time that the that the article came back came out on the on the web page as well. So you know, we talked about uh, you know particularly this 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 tool you know that we, that we were using because it is kind of new on the market and you know where we're trying to you know, TV, he was trying to say, okay, these are some really results from real people doing these things. And so I, I think what was compelling was that, you know, I'd really gone from really no, no consistent weight training to speak of to, 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 to using this particular tool and the results that I'd gotten from the tool. 
so that was that was kind of the uh, the compelling uh, element of why I think he reached out and you know and also he's a nice guy so uh, so we had about a I don't know maybe 30 minutes um, interview and it's it's on his uh, on his YouTube channel even though now you're still kind of on that journey yourself you said you want to drop that uh, or drop to 15 percent body fat overall you're now in a position now where you're looking to help other people reach fitness goals of their own so how how are you going about doing that i i, I rely mainly on my facebook profile um you know i, I got a lot of good feedback from from people on and that i'm friends with on the um, the results that I've had. And I think it is a common struggle for folks um, that, you know, whether they want to lose weight or they used to, they used to work out or, or they, they're just, there's so much, uh, there's so much information on the, on the internet um, for, for fit, physical fitness and health. There's a lot of junk. There's a lot of liars. There's a lot of um, stuff that, uh, that I, I think frustrate people because they go in, maybe with some wrong um, expectations or incorrect because of what they've been told. They try this program. It doesn't work. They get frustrated and they quit. And I've been there. You know, I, I certainly understand that. And, but I think what, what everybody needs to understand, what I figured out for myself is I need to understand how this machine works, this, this, this particular machine, because the things that affect me aren't going to affect you and that type. But we're, we're all under this umbrella of being in physical bodies that operate in a, in a, in a similar way, but our chemistries are different. Our hor hormones are different. You know, I think for me, I found that I had to know what, what, what my data showed, what things that affected me and didn't affect me. And I think for me, I feel like that's, that's overlooked in this industry is really getting to the heart of what do you need? What, what, what is your, physiology what things do you react to what things do you not react to what things do you what things do you need in your life to be sustainable because if, if it's not sustainable you're not going to be disciplined that doesn't mean it has to be easy that just is something that is just something I can do over the long term I can't eat salads every day for for months on end because I can't sustain it I can sustain what I figured out works for me I have I eat the same breakfast I eat the same lunch I eat the same dinner with some variety. So I know what my bounds are for me. I think that's one of the things that, you know, organic marketing, organic, um, particularly through my, my Facebook profile helps because you communicate with people, you talk to people, you, you don't treat everybody the same because it's, that's the one thing I think is, 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 uh, missing from the fitness community is getting to know people's individual struggles and the challenges that they face, whether it's, their kids, whether it's their job, whether it's their own physiology, whether it's their own, um, you know, emotional or, or mental challenges that they have to work their way through. And that's why I think that type of, that type of environment, um, that the, 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 that what conversation or attraction marketing really works well in that environment. Great. It, it sounds like, uh, you, you're going to start building up quite a quite a following on social media then especially if uh, you're, you're documenting these results uh, as as you're going along uh, as well i mean what uh, what would you say your plans are then for the next uh, for the next 12 months let's say yeah I, I would say to 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 really um increase my audience is, is a goal and so I have, I have different methodologies to do that and um you know then to get a feeling as opposed to thinking, Oh, I know how to solve your problem with this thing. I, I, I need, I need the market to tell me, I need people to tell me what they feel like they, they really struggle with. Um, there might be, you know, you know, in, until you start, you know, looking at the dynamics until you start looking at the data, um, you know, it'd be foolish to think that everybody wants to buy a certain thing or have a certain instruction or that type of thing. So, um, I do, th I, I, if I were to guess, I would say there's a lot around mindset. And, you know, there, there's a lot around nutritional uh, education. There's a lot about um, probably with, you know, the sustainability of certain types of resistance training. That's all individualized. I, th I think that is probably where things are headed um, in terms of, but I, but I really need to figure out what, what my audience, ultimately the, that audience is going to tell me is their biggest challenge and how I can help them. 
Well, you've certainly got a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience that you can share with other people. So if anybody wants to find out more about what you're doing, if they want to find out more about you and how you can help them, where is the best place for them to find you? Just uh, type in my name, Ted Crowshore, into Google, and you'll hopefully find my blog. So I, I blog, um, you know, have some random thoughts, have some ideas about um, things that I've worked through, um, things that I'm continuing to go through. And, and of course, that's uh, I'm, I'm also on my Facebook page as well. Um, you know, same Ted Crowshore. Uh, look me up, friend me. Um, and, and so I'm always putting something on. You might get a, a picture of my dogs or my kids, uh, but you also might get something about physical fitness in there, too. Uh, so I, I think that, that those are two places that you can find me. What's the address for the blog? It's www.tedcrowshore.com. Excellent. I'll also put that in the show notes as well, just so people can get uh, easy access to that. Okay, so I think we'll we'll wrap things up there. Um, this has been really interesting. I, I've I've been fascinated to to know about the journey that you've been on over the past. Well, we say the past year, but obviously it's been going on far before that as well, and now. You know, at, at at the age you're at now, you're in that position where you're hitting your weight goals that you want, the fitness goals that you want. It sounds like you've got a, a diet, a, a nutrition plan that you can that you can follow, and that you actually enjoy as well. So it sounds like you're in a, a pretty good spot at the moment. So I just want to say a big thank you for for coming on the show today. It, it's been really great chatting with you and and to chat about something different as well. So thank you very much for that. Oh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed the conversation. Now, my pleasure, and I'll catch up with you on Facebook soon. Sounds great. If you enjoy Engage, please show your support at engagersclub.com, our exclusive members-only club with enough content, training, and behind-the-scenes access to keep you going until the next episode. That's engagersclub.com. Also, please rate and review this podcast wherever you download them. Stay engaged. <laughs>